kickoff for the Wildcats. Looking for credibility as a Big Ten championship contender. Della Valley and Kenny are the deep men for Penn State. Big Ten home opener, short kickoff. And here's Kenny on the 20, out near the 30-yard line. And that's where Matt McGloin of the Penn State offense will operate. McGloin leading the Big Ten in passing. And could you say, Brian, one of the more improved players in the country this year? Absolutely. He's benefited the most on this Penn State team from Bill O'Brien and his offense. Last week took a little bit of a step back with his accuracy. A lot of low balls in that game against Illinois. He's going to have to be more efficient today against the better Northwestern team. His best games in his career come against Northwestern. And on play action, looking to dump it off to his tight end, Gary Gilliam. And up near the 46 yard line, they will use the tight ends in many different ways. And Gilliam, not known as a pass catcher, picks up 16. Yeah, if they can establish a running game with Belton and Zwinak, all of a sudden the play action game will have more sting. Gilliam, not known for his pass catching abilities, he's the wide tight end in this offense for Bill O'Brien. Mostly known as a blocker, but a good catch there. At two positions, the Y and the F tight end. We'll talk more about that as we go along. First down for Penn State on its 45. Here's Bill Belton. And a big hole for Belton. Trying to get the corner, but he's chased down after a game of close to 10. And then a penalty flag comes in as Quinn Evans hit Belton late. And Belton ran into a table on the Northwestern bench. So tack on 15, that'll place the ball near the 30-yard line of Northwestern. It's just not necessary. Early in the game, it's emotional. You want to come out, and defensively, you want to make a play, establish yourself. And just not, to, not a smart play. Well, Pat Fitzgerald told us that he was concerned about his team being too high. Yeah. We saw them overrun a play to the right, and then the cutback there, and then the late hit. It's a big game for Northwestern. Pat Fitzgerald senses the opportunity this year with what's going on in the Big Ten. They're fast up, but you got to manage your emotions early in games. So from the 30 yard line, here's Belton in the hole, able to make one move, but then grabbed to the ankles by Eric Guzzo for a short game. Our impact players brought to you by Firestone. Yes, the tight end, but you also got wide receiver Allen Robinson, two really good defensive players. Yeah, and Jordan Hill really got after Northwestern's offensive line a year ago. They had seven sacks against Dan Perso, and then Mike Monty is quietly having one of the better seasons in all the Big Ten from the linebacker position. National Defensive Player of the Year after two interceptions, or Defensive Player of the Week, rather, after two picks against Illinois. Second down and long. Third straight carry for Belton, and he's wrapped up by Damian Proby, the middle linebacker. We'll see a lot of different running backs for Penn State. Belton is starting, but out of the uh, five games played, they've had four different players lead them in rushing in a single game, including Belton, who missed three games with an ankle injury, but returned last week to set a career high with 65 rushing yards against the Illini. Yeah, for this Penn State offense to continue to produce every week with having so many injuries at the running back position, for really credit to Bill O'Brien's play call, but also Matt McGuire distributing the football. Third down and long. This may be four down territory for Penn State as McGuire is flushed out and dumps it off to Benton. And Benton will get to the 29. You would imagine Penn State would go for it here. Their, their kicker, Sam Fickett, is two of eight as long as 32. And they're going to stay on the field, even though it's fourth down and nine. That's why that play on first down, that stop for Northwestern was so big. Well, we were talking with Coach O'Brien last night. He said, you know, when I get on the plus side of the field, I really treat second down or third down like second down because I know in all likelihood I'm going to be going for it on fourth down because we just haven't been able to find that consistency of kicker. It'd be a 47 yard kick, and there is some wind here. So fourth down and nine. Some movement 
So now it's fourth and fourteen. Starts. You may be popped. Offense number fifteen. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. Let's see this. You know, Bill O'Brien, first time as a head coach, has to make these kinds of decisions. Does he say, you know what, I'm better off yeah. punting and trying to pin, pin uh, uh, North, Northwestern D? Absolutely. Now you got to punt this football. You know, first drive of the game. Maybe you get it down inside the ten, inside the five. Get this crowd into it. Force Northwestern to have to deal with the, with the noise in this stadium inside their own five yard line. So Alex Butterworth becomes extremely important today. Butterworth marked the deep end. Three Nittany Lions around the ball. Can they keep it from going into the end zone? They do. Down at the one-yard line by Jesse Delavalle. And the two guys responsible play the same position. Quarterback Kane Coulter and Trevor Simeon. Coulter was lined up all over the place. Had four rushing touchdowns. Nine receptions. He'll start this game at quarterback after Simeon started last week at the QB position. Ball on the Northwestern one, and Colts are straight ahead trying to push the pile and give the Wildcats a breathing room. Jordan Hill, the first man to make contact for Penn State. Yeah, I wouldn't read anything into Kane Coulter starting because a couple of reasons why you're inside your one yard line. You just want to get some movement, get some space to operate. But you're going to see Kane Coulter line up everywhere in the formation for Northwestern. He's going to win the ball, he's going to catch the ball, he's going to throw the football. And then when Trevor Simeon comes in, he's the arm that they like to use to throw the football down the field. Same formation here on second down and eight. Time to be a handoff for Mark, and he's upended after maybe a yard. Dan Ball may have come out there, but ruled down is Mark. It'll bring up third down and six. They got to the five, and Hill with another tackle. I think it's a great decision by Bill O'Brien to punt that football down here because you put Northwestern inside their five. This is not where they like to operate in a huddle. Their spread offense is not really viable inside that five yard line, so he's taking that out of the equation. Shotgun here for Coulter on third down and six. Penn State with nine in the box. Roll up, and Coulter in trouble gets out of the end zone, gets positive yardage, but dropped by Gerald Hodges after a one yard gain. It's a three and out for Northwestern. Again, it all started with that great punt by Butterworth. Right, you get the crowd into it. There are a lot of good things happen there for Penn State. You don't allow Northwestern to get into their no huddle system. They like to get a first down first, and then they ramp up the speed. But inside their own 10, very difficult. Brandon Williams will punt from eight yards deep. Go home! Go home! And a short home. kick from the 30-yard line. Down and twirled down at the 37, but... Very good field position for Penn State. And they basically end up with the football where they punted it from. So you go back and look at that, the opportunity to kick the field goal or punt, and I think it was the right decision. Zach Zwinak in the game at tailback. At a career high 100 yards rushing. Last week in the win over Illinois. But it's a pass on first down to Mosby Felder, and he's loose. Drive comes down, and Mosby Felder reaches the 30 before he's wrapped up. Gain of seven yards, but let's see what the penalty flag is. John O'Neill, our referee. Well, Ohio State showed last week that it's legitimate in the Big Ten, yep. but they can't win a Big Ten championship on probation this year, not bowl eligible. So this is a big opportunity for a school like Northwestern to prove that it belongs in the conversation. Brian. Absolutely. And, you know, 5 and 0 is not unfamiliar territory for Northwestern. It's the third time they've done it under Pat Fitzgerald, but 6 and 0 is very uncustomary for them. I haven't done it since 1962. So this is a great opportunity for them to make a statement not only in the Big Ten race, but also in their history as an organization. Here's McGlaw at first and 18, the screen to Swinnick. And he's inside the 35. He's about 14. Brought down by Quentin Williams. Penn State, of course, is not eligible for the Big Ten championship. Four-year probation, as you know, for uh, the Nittany Lions. In the leaders' division, it's down to Purdue, Wisconsin, Illinois, 
That's, that's why I said should stop the Wisconsin. Yeah, Purdue and Wisconsin, and, and who knows in, in the Legends Division is Northwestern uh, one of the teams to beat. A swing pass that's dropped by Robinson. So third down and seven. Robinson, 32 catches, number two in the Big Ten, but he could not hang on here. Yeah, and this is just a run pass option for Matt McGloin. If the corner's off of Robinson, he can just flip it out there. If the corner's up hard pressed, then they run the football. And Robinson normally sure handed. Uh, just that's uncharacteristic of him. So let's see how they handle this again if they go towards the first down marker or just try to get three or four yards. Yeah. Because you know they're not kicking a field goal from here. Third and seven, will hand it off to win out. Trying to get away from an ankle tackle, he can. Short of the first down. And Penn State faced with a fourth and four, will likely go for it. Quentin Williams made another tackle for Northwestern. So he treated that like it was second down. Absolutely, and you get in these situations, fourth down and four, and I know Bill O'Brien coming from the National Football League, and the National Football you, do, you use your cadence a lot more than you do in college. I would anticipate here using a hard count, maybe you get a cheap five yards. Now we'll give him the first down, it's fourth and four. And the one going to call a timeout. So Bill O'Brien will talk about it. See if that changes his mind here, fourth and four when we come back. Four and down, Texas. In this situation, they love to go to tight ends. Here's the tight end in the slot. McGloin instead throws the screen and Robinson has the first down inside the 20 yard line. Tackled at the 19. Gain of 12. Ibrahim Campbell on the stop. 33rd catch of the year for Allen Robinson. Great execution. The block by Felder first and then Farrell the tackle comes outside. They had three offensive linemen that got out on the perimeter. The center, right guard, and right tackle all with blocks. And net a first down for Penn State. There were two tight ends here, one to either side of the formation on first down. And Swinnock straight ahead and gets nailed by Quentin Williams, who seems like he's been at Northwestern forever. They're a pretty good run defense. Lead the Big Ten 13th in the country, giving up just 90 rushing yards per game. This is the area of field where Penn State has struggled. They have not been as good as Bill O'Brien wants to be in red zone offense. And for that reason, they have failed to score some points in critical games. Loss of one on the previous play, so second and 11. Here comes a blitz. McGloin gets rid of it, and it's pulled in by Lehman, the tight end, at the 15-yard line for a gain of about five, third and six coming up. A good recognition by McGloin to get rid of that football, knowing that he could not block that blitz that came, and Lehman breaks off his route, brings up the manageable third down situation here, third and six, and again, I don't think that Bill O'Brien is going to treat this any different than he did in the previous two series. He's going to try to use both downs to get first down. So we could see a run play like we did on third down and seven. This is third and six. McGloin will throw here. Everybody cover. McGloin hit, gets rid of the pass into traffic. It's caught just short of the first down marker by the back, Zach Swinak. And again, you would imagine Penn State will go for it here, even though it would be about a 27-yard field goal. Well, this is uh, Bill O'Brien on the sideline saying, no, 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 yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Matt McGloin, great effort in the pocket. He knows that he can't take a sack in that situation because then he doesn't give himself a chance to go for a fourth down, gets rid of that football. So here in the first quarter, they're, they're going on fourth down for the second time. They were going to go for a third time before a penalty. They forced him to punt. They go with their heavy package on fourth down and one. Zwinnick. Gets the first down to the six yard line. Brought down by Proby, but after Zach Swinnett, sophomore, gets the first down. And this is what Penn State has to be able to do is come off the foot for one sword. It's going to block on the linebacker. Very well done, and that's just power football. They're going to win this game. There's going to be situations, short yardage, but Penn State's going to have to convert with their big backs. Really got the tight end flexed all the way to the top of your screen. Kyle Carter, McGloin loves to throw it to him in the red zone. It'll be a run play instead. 
Swinna met at the point of the tag and driven down. He got positive yardage to about the four for a pickup of three. Brought in there again for the Wildcats on defense. And I think if they're going to get better in red zone efficiency and scoring touchdowns, as we say so many weeks out of the season, you got to be able to run the ball down here. And Swinak is really the guy that's got to step up and, and make those plays. Already 13 plays run in Northwestern territory for Penn State. And he lines with a second down and goal. So he likes the again. Led the team in rushing each of the last two weeks. Here's Winnick off the right side. Stumbles to the three yard line. They're also going to say that first contact with the ground happened at the four. That's where the ball was when Swinak was tripped up by Tyler Scott. So third down and goal from the same spot as second down. Well, I'm going to go a little bit and say that they might be in field goal range here if they don't make a touchdown. But I don't know. But in this situation, Bill O'Brien loves play action pass. So keep an eye out for those tight ends. Carter's in a ring slot right now. There he goes in motion. Third and goal, play action. McLaughlin dropped by Carter. It would have been a touchdown. He was open. Proby was in the area, the middle linebacker. Carter couldn't hang on to it. It's fourth down, and they will bring on the field goal team. Well, he had a dealer's choice. Zornich went in the flat. He was open, could have caught a touchdown, and then just took his eyes off the ball. Kyle Carter, you've got to know where you are in the field. No reason to turn your head. You catch that ball, fall backwards, it's a touchdown. You don't need to see anything else. Keep your eyes on the football. So here we go. This could be an adventure. Sam Ficken with a 21-yard field goal try. And the crowd goes wild. 90,000 plus for the standing ovation for Sam Ficken. They have not given up a point in the first quarter, and they've scored now 52. In fact, in the first half, they're outscoring teams 79 to 9. They've not allowed a first half touchdown. Western's got a pretty good offense. Last drive started at the one. We'll see where this one begins. Denver marked an excellent return man. Able to get outside, but ran out of bounds around the 20. Let's check in with Reese in the studio. Defensive end out there chasing down the running back. All right, here we go. Strap up your chin straps at home. This offense is getting ready to go fast. Simeon last week. Went for over 300 yards. Now run the ball. Then with Mark, who's 5'8, 180 pounds. Had a career high 139 rushing yards a week ago against Indiana. Simeon now faced with a third down. Three and three. And, three. and this is where he loves to go to the other quarterback, Kane Coulter. He's in the ball game as you see now. He's down here at the bottom of the screen. He had six catches last week for third down conversions. And nine catches overall. Had almost 300 yards total offense, Coulter did. Simeon. That pass deflected. Incomplete. Jordan Hill, outstanding defensive tackle who gave Northwestern fits last year, comes up with a play. He was trying to get the ball to Coulter, and they just ran a stunt up front. Looked like Deion Barnes. He left defensive end, got his hand on that football. Barnes has been making more and more plays in this defense for Ted Ruth. Really excited about the potential of the young freshman. It was Barnes, but also Hill got the push into the quarterback, and now the punt. Uh, Brandon Williams. And it's going to be fair caught by Evan Lewis, just shy of the 30 yard line. Bill O'Brien is really advanced with the use of these tight ends, and they try to find matchups that are favorable in this offense, and they've done so so far. 
Michael Zordich in the game and running back. McGloin will throw. And a low pass that's caught by Trevor Williams, a true freshman for seven yards. All right, Coach O'Brien mentioned the F and the Y. Explain what the Y is and who the F tight end is and, and yeah. what they do differently. The Y tight end is the bigger tight end, 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, that's, that's Lehman, that's Gilliam, that's Jesse James. They're the blocking tight ends that line up on the line of scrimmage. The F tight ends are a little bit smaller. That's the Aaron Hernandez position. That's the, those guys that are, that are moving around in the offense that have an opportunity to catch the ball, run it, or get some uh, pass protection opportunities. On second down, Swinnick and Northwestern doing a good job again against the run. Penn State averaging only a couple of yards a carry in this game. As Wabusi, Chance Carter were there defensively, so third down and short coming up. Third down is an area where Bill O'Brien will use those tight ends. And we've seen now three of them have checked into the ball game. So you have Gilliam, who's the Y tight end, Kyle Carter, who's an F tight end, and then Matt Lehman, who's kind of a, of a wild card guy. But you see Lehman down here at the bottom of your screen. You've got another tight end. You've got three of them in there. So you got two lines in an F. Absolutely. Back to throw the goal. Wide open is the F. Kyle Carter inside. The 45 yard line, out of bounds at the 43, pushed out by Damian Proby. And why it's difficult is you got to be able to find these guys in the formation. That time, lack of recognition by Northwestern. Araguza was responsible for this guy in the flat, either he or the corner, and you have a lot of different formations and a lot of different personnel groupings with players that can do a lot of different personal things. It's hard to match up. They line up Zorich here at tailback and go with two tight ends. Play action. McGloin in trouble. And McGloin almost throws an interception trying to throw it away. Chance Carter, a defensive lineman, was covering the running back, Michael Zordich. And also you had Chi Chi Araguza in the face of Matt McGloin in the backfield. They wanted to take a shot down the field. A lot of times when coordinators on the offensive side cross the 50-yard line, they say, you know what, let's take a shot to the end zone. Hard play action. There was an open over the top. And then they covered the outlet Zordich in the flat. He was just trying to dump it at his feet. Again, McGloin looking downfield again, but it's covered. McGloin spins in the backfield and dumps it off to Jesse James, and he got lit up by Wabusi. Big hit, and no gain on the play, so third down and 10. This Northwestern defense has played well so far. I mean, they've uh, given up only three points that last drive, 11 plays, but they, they hold and stiffen inside the red zone. And, and now, again, bringing up a third and long situation. I've been impressed so far with the way that this defense and Mike Hankwitz has, has called this game. They don't have to snap it. We'll see if they do before the end of the quarter. Five seconds remaining. And they win. So a quick quarter time of possession favoring Penn State. 11 and a half minutes to three and three nothing that they lines on the scoreboard. If you look at the Big Ten standings, Northwestern is really the only team to have success out of conference against other BCS schools, but those teams they beat aren't doing well, so it's really hard to gauge where Northwestern is. Ohio State with a big win last week against Michigan State, and then got Nebraska tonight on ABC. But you've got schools like Purdue. I know Herbie has picked Purdue to win the Big Ten. Yeah. Michigan, huh? You know, they struggled. It's, it's so early. We're only seeing the second Big Ten uh, week uh, of the season for, for conference play. It's early. Third and 10, McGloin. And the pass batted down. Incomplete. Fourth down and 10. We talked about, you know, Penn State sometimes running a third down play as if it's second down, but not on that. Uh, position of the field they'll punt here and try to pin Northwestern deep again. Yeah as I look at it I think Bill O'Brien in his head says if we get across the 35 yard line that's where I would, would go for it on fourth down or treat third down like second down but outside of that I'm on punt. After the short kick has the football at the 15 yard line let's check in with Reese Davis in the studio. At the 15 yard line.
It's 3 0 Penn State and Kane Coulter, the game quarterback. Coulter's played some of the receiver in this game. He hands it off here to Benrick Muck and wrapped up on the sideline by Gerald Hodges. So a gain of about three on first and ten. But one way to stop this explosive offense for Northwestern is not give them the football. They've only had six total plays in the first quarter, one right there in the second quarter. But they average 82 offensive plays per game. They're on track to run 24. Simeon runs in to play quarterback for second down. Coulter and wide receiver. And Simeon over the middle. Daquan Jones, a defensive tackle, dropped. And I don't know if Simeon didn't see him or just tried to fit it into traffic. Got confused here. It's a zone blitz from Ted Roof, defensive coordinator. You're exactly right. Daquan Jones dropped right underneath the hot throw. And experienced defensive coordinators will do that to inexperienced quarterbacks like Simeon. Simeon will stay in for third and seven. They're up there again. Here they are. Completing close to 70 percent of his passes, getting the call from the sideline with a play clock down to five. And he's hit as he throws, and it's picked off, and then the ball comes out. Still loose, and Penn State falls on it. Ruled incomplete by one official, a fumble by another. Really on the field. And now they are going to say the pass was incomplete. Incomplete. Fourth down. So let's see here. You've got to complete the catch all the way to the ground. And he nice. didn't look like he ever had possession. Golden opportunity for Hodges there. That ball was high because of the pressure on Simeon. It looked like Sean Stanley, the defensive end, got back there and forced an air throw. Butterworth will punt it from his five yard line. Penn State comes after it. And the fair catch made by Evan Lewis. They're a coming off experience a, there, yeah. And they're coming off a, a come from behind win against Wisconsin. They got some momentum. Ohio State big road win at Michigan State. First down for Penn State on its 45, a short set for McGloin. And looking for somebody to throw it to. And finds Mosby Felder who can't hang on. Let's check it out with Jen Brown is going to give us a feel for how things are on the Northwestern sideline. Thanks, Dave. Well, as you said earlier, Pat Fitzgerald was concerned his team might be too excited coming into today's game in warm-ups. They were certainly very amped up and loose, but right now very subdued over here on the sidelines. Fitzgerald said he would learn a lot about his football team in the first 15 minutes, and with those three three and outs, can't be too happy right now. Certainly the Penn State defense has played well against that offense as Bell is upended, but Northwestern's defenses look good, especially Brian against the run here in the first 17 minutes of the game. Yeah, we don't talk very very much about Northwestern's defense. Talk a lot about you know explosive offense and that can they outscore opponents in the Big Ten? Uh, but certainly this this defense doesn't do a whole lot of things fancy. They play one or two base defenses and coverages, but they all know exactly what they're supposed to do and where they're supposed to be in those defenses. And for that reason, don't see a whole lot of busts. And they put Penn State in third and long for most of the game. It's third and ten right here. McLaughlin airing it on far side and nearly picked off. It was underthrown. Alex Kenny was the intended receiver. And there were two defenders over there for Northwestern. Daniel Jones, the nickel man, almost had the interception. Yeah, they played a two deep zone, or two deep with man underneath, which is a very difficult defense to throw against. Jones, a young player, true sophomore, played a bunch last year, uh, but played that perfectly underneath the receiver. Butterworth booting it away. Then a mark. And it'll bounce at the 25 yard line. Takes a Penn State roll inside the 10. It did not hit an any line. It was close around the 18. Dave Pash, Brian Greasy, Jen Brown. A record for total offense for Northwestern last week. They barely had the ball today. 15 yards on nine plays. That's really been because of first and second down. They haven't been able to get any kind of yardage. And they've been in third longs. And they can't block this defensive front in third long situations. Trevor Simeon and a quarterback will throw it from his end zone. In trouble. Flips out of the pocket and will head for the sideline and get about two yards to the 10-yard line. 
Simeon is a sophomore. Coulter is a junior. Simeon had a, a good game-winning touchdown pass against Syracuse late. And they're going to shuffle it up here. Simeon, Simeon, wide receiver. Yeah, he stayed in the formation now at wide receiver. So keep an eye on him down here at the bottom of the screen. And Coulter trying to get the exchange. Gets tackled by Olanian and Benrick Mark. And Coulter, and the quarterback, was deciding whether to give or keep, but Olanian blew the play up. Yeah, played very well by Olanian. You see, they brought Hodges on the outside, and Hodges' responsibility is Kane Coulter. He has the quarterback 100%, and that freed up Olanian to take the down. Now Simeon, the quarterback, for third and nine. Absolutely, but that's a nice play by Gerald Hodges, knowing that as a linebacker, I probably can't run with Coulter, but I sure can be physical with him, not let him get downfield. Hunting from the end zone. Short kick, it is windy, and fielded by Evan Lewis. Knocked down at the 40-yard line. Araguzo with the special teams tackle. But again, Penn State with excellent field position, starting inside the Northwestern 40, but only three points yeah. to show for. And but you, you've got to give credit to Ted Roof and this defensive staff for coming out and playing the way they have in the first quarter. This is an explosive offense for Northwestern, and they've come out with a good plan. They've been physical up front, rushed the passer. They've played zone coverages behind, kept things in front of them, and not allowed Kane Coulter to get outside the play. First down from the 40. Bill O'Brien told us how much he loves empty. Here it is on first and 10. McLean Sardine gets hit, but delivers it to Mosby Felder. Breaks a tackle inside the 30-yard line and steps out at the 35. It's a 15-yard gain. Pushed out by Quinn Evans. The pocket collapses on Matt McLean. Great job of keeping his composure, knowing where all his receivers are, and then making a throw on the duress. Seventh first down for Penn State. 27 plays run by the Indian Lions. Here's number 28. McGloin, dangerous throw, but it's caught by Mosby Felder at the 23 for a couple of yards. He was tackled immediately. Nick Van Hoos on the coverage. We've seen uh, Northwestern use the hurry up the defense, and now Bill O'Brien starting to use his hurry up. He calls it NASCAR. He might still be running. Brought down by David Wabusi at the 17 yard line after a gain of seven. And I think it was interesting to listen to Bill O'Brien that he was going to use the NASCAR sparingly because he didn't want to go really quick, go three and out, and keep his defense on the field against an explosive Northwestern team. But he's done so far. A pass here on third down and one, and it deflected by the linebacker, Eric Guzzo, on an underthrown some problems with that last week. Didn't have enough on that pass. It was intended for Robinson. Well, they were going to try to get play action to suck up Araguso, but he played it well, reacted, and then was able to use his athletic ability to get a hand on the football. That's not an easy play to make as a linebacker because they have hard power run faith that he has to respect and then react to the play action pass. Would that, would that pass have even made it there, though? He was five yards in front of him when he knocked it down. Hard to tell. Fourth down and one, and they're going for it for the third time. Quarterback sneak, and McGuire picks it up to the 14-yard line. Would have been a 32-yard field goal, but they're going for it in the red zone. Three for three on fourth down. Saw a little bit of a lane there. It looked like the, the nose guard went one way and the defensive tackle the other, and there was a natural seam. For Matt McGuire, short run, you have to expect sneak. Here's Winnick trying to pick up all. Able to keep 
the feet moving, but stacked up after a gain of one to the 13-yard line. Ibrahim Campbell in there, the strong safety for Northwestern to make the stop. We're talking with Bill O'Brien, and he said, you know, I got four backs now that are healthy that can run. Last week, I just kept seeing Zwinak slam it in there consistently against the Illinois, so that's why he's got the start. Here he is again, and he's inside the ten. There will be blood. Orioles, Yankees, Greasy versus Greasy. <laughs> Brian, an Orioles fan, Bob, a Yankees fan. First down to the 25 yard line of Northwestern. Simeon. And it's caught at the 31 yard line by Christian Jones. So if you're Pat Fitzgerald, how do you handle this quarterback situation right now? You know, they, I, I would play Kane Coulter at quarterback just right now until I get some rhythm because this Penn State defense is good at rushing the pass or not as good sideline to sideline. Run play mark, and they're able to push the pile to get the first down. They've got right now Simeon at quarterback and Coulter at receiver. Yeah, and, but most importantly, they, they needed to get that first first down because now they can ramp up in, in their pace. But when they have Coulter at quarterback, there's much more threat of the horizontal game, which the speed of this Penn State defense, I don't think can keep up with. That was their first first down. Christian Jones, that's his 17th catch of the year. Got a handful on that play. Uh, and, and this settles down the young quarterback. Nice catch. Inbound to the down the young quarterback with a couple completions. Mark gets hammered and then they'll line the scrimmage. Third and three for Northwestern. Mogus is in at left guard. And Simeon throws complete. First down into Penn State territory. Rashad Lawrence makes the catch, his 13th grab of the season. Uh, got a uh, slant round on the outside into the zone coverage. Nice call by Mick McCall on third down to get a first down. Just a slant inside the zone coverage, easy to complete. First play of the Northwestern's run in Penn State territory. At the 48-yard line, an empty set. Coulter at wide receiver, Simeon at quarterback, and a pass that's caught by the running back, Mike Trumpy, who was lined up at receiver. They're moving guys all over the place in this Wildcat offense. Yeah, it's really the dealer's choice for Simeon. When you get into an empty set and you see off coverage, just get the ball into the hands of the receiver and let him make a move. Simeon to throw on second and five. Passes high and incomplete. It was intended for Coulter. And it'll be third down and five. Here's the one thing that concerns me about what I saw last week from Trevor Simeon. Some, some of his balls come out high. This ball is high to Coulter. 
you don't want to lay out your receivers like that, number one. But number two, when you throw the ball high, you bring the tip into the equation, and that's never good for the offense. You can turn it over. Again, they're expecting about 20 mile an hour winds, and you know, the flags are moving here, and maybe that's a factor. It looks like it's been in the kicking game so far, as that punt was almost blocked. And again, that hung in the air, and it's mopped. It's recovered by Northwestern. It's dead, though. You can't advance a month. It'll be Northwestern ball inside the 17-yard line, recovered by Nick Van Hoos. It looked like the ball hung in the air, and it was misjudged by Jesse Della Valley. Well, the wind is blowing from his back, and I think he just, you're right, he misjudged that. He didn't need to take his eye off the ball because he had signaled for the fair catch. I think maybe there was a gust of wind and a big change in momentum and an opportunity now for Northwestern to get back in this game. So just as we're talking about the wind, you see it playing a role. Now the Wildcats with an opportunity to get points down 10 nothing midway through the half. Kane Coulter is in the game at quarterback here as they're in the red zone. And Coulter will keep inside the 15. Coulter to the 10 and down at the four yard line. Gerald Hodges tracks him down. That was beautiful, 13 yards. <laughs> this is why I would have this guy at quarterback. They have two guys assigned to him and he just splits up. Hodges can't keep up with him. Stanley didn't know where to take the dive or the quarterback. When you put Kane Coulter in that position, good things happen for Northwestern. He had the dive, there was also the pitch there too because he had the other guy in the backfield. Absolutely. The traditional veer option is all it is. First and goal from the four. Coulter. Mock straight ahead. Down to the two yard line before he swarmed. Anthony Zettel in there for Penn State. This is tough for Mark. He's about 150 pounds going in there against 300 pound yeah. defensive lineman between the tackles. Well, I'm surprised they give Mark that, that ball power run like that. That's normally Trumpy's job in this offense, especially down there inside the five yard line. But two guys back there again with Colts and no receivers. And here's the pitch as Coulter gets it to Mark, who's in. Touchdown, Northwestern. And boy, Coulter got nailed just as he released the pitch. And Mark takes it in for his sixth rushing touchdown. Well, it's a speed option this time. They get a great block from the fullback on the outside. Hodges does his job. He's got the full the quarterback and Carson, the middle linebacker, just not enough speed to keep up with Venrick Mark. So Northwestern takes advantage of the turnover, the muffed punt. We saw Penn State muff a punt week one when they had Gerald Hodges back there. And that changed momentum in that game. Ohio, that was really the first time they did it in the red zone. Let's see if they do it when they're on their own track. I, I think they should. I don't think there's any reason why they shouldn't be doing that more all over the field. Flaherty with a short kick up again. The wind the factor. Della Valley on the return. Out to the 30-yard line. We got drilled but hung on to the ball. Let's check in with Reese Davis in the studio. Be a terrific game tonight, seven Eastern on ESPN. Here it's ten seven Penn State play action for McGloin, airing it out. And in the double coverage, it's broken up. It was intended for Mosby Felder. Campbell was down there for Northwestern. 
Yeah, this was a greedy throw from Matt McGloin. You had a single safety defense, and you never throw the post against a single safety. April Campbell was in perfect position. That ball only goes downfield in Bill O'Brien's offense against the two safety look, the quarters look when they react on the run fake. So it's a misread by Matt McGloin. But a good no front could have been caught. That's a tough, that's a tough ball to catch when the safety's in center field and is able to play. He's went out on second and ten. And he powers to the 35-yard line. That's one of their better run plays today. Five yards, so third and five coming up. I'm surprised, quite frankly, we haven't seen a little bit more of Bill Belton. You know, he's he's really the guy that brings the speed and shiftiness from the halfback position. I understand Zwinak had a great game the last two weeks over 100 yards, but they need a little bit of an element of speed, I think, to go along with the power of Zwinak. Penn State. Last home win against a ranked team was 2008, but it was also the last year Northwestern was ranked. Wildcats trying to go 6 and 0 for the first time in 50 years. They're down three. As McGloin on third down throws high, intended for Carter. And that was into triple coverage. So Northwestern's defense bounces back with a three and out, forcing a punt. Yeah, just trying to get Carter on a shallow cross, and he couldn't get through traffic. That was the issue there. That, that's where the ball should go in man to man coverage, but he couldn't get through the traffic. And now all of a sudden, the momentum, Northwestern gets a turnover, touchdown, and a three and out. And you sense the change of momentum in this game in the first half. And the win playing more of a role in the center right Yeah. It's really picking up. You can see the debris on the field, and you could also see the ball kind of flutter off the foot. Well, that was a shank. <laughs> that was in the wind. That well, was a shank. Helped it though on the shank, <laughs> made it worse. <laughs> Again, supposed to be about 25 mile an hour winds here. BCS countdown on ESPN and ESPNU this Sunday, a day after the dust settles. Our analysts break down the key victories and defeats that take place on the college gridiron throughout the weekend. Starts at 8:30. And at nine, presented by Discover Cup, ESPN, ESPNU. So Simeon's in a quarterback on the Northwestern 43. And he'll throw. And it's caught by Demetrius Fields at the 47 yard line if he stayed in bounds. Gain of about four. Let's see if he got one foot down. Boy, it looked like that right foot touched the sideline when he came down, but you know the thing Northwestern goes so fast it's hard to get a uh, Forget about it now. Here's Mark. Got some blockers up there. And Mark, boy, little guy, didn't run out of bounds. Ran right into a defender, picked up an additional couple of yards. It's Colton quarterback for third and one. He'll hand it off. And Trippy is nailed by Hodges. Loss on the play. It's fourth down. Northwestern has not had an answer for Gerald Hodges yet today. He's going to come off the edge, and the guard just whiffs. He's supposed to kick him out, and the speed of Hodges, one of the better linebackers in the Big Ten, and then Jordan Hill's on the inside to clean up as well. You know, that was Mulrow, who was hurt earlier, who was back in the game. Yes, yes. Now, maybe that impacted him there as he tried to get up against Hodges. And the wind playing a factor. Fair call. At the 21 yard line. So far, Brian, this is very similar to the Ohio game where the momentum shifted after a muffed punt. Now, how does Penn State respond? They need to respond better than they did in that game against the Bobcats because they ended up losing that. Well, game. that was a big play, that third and one, because the momentum had clearly changed in Northwestern's favor that with the turnover, then the touchdown, and then the three and out. And if they were to get that first down in Penn State territory, you're looking at further opportunities for Northwestern to put points on the board. So that was a good start for Penn State in stemming the tide of this emotion. Penn State operating on its 21 yard line. The late handoff to Zordich. And he's out to the 25 yard line for about four yards. For Penn State on his 25. We haven't seen Bill Belton at all. Don't know if he's shaken up. He started the game at running back. McGloin flushed out. Dangerous throw, but it's caught by Robinson. Over the middle, usually is a pick. Nick Van Hoos was in position, but it's Allen Robinson, the wide receiver, who comes up with it for a first down. Yeah, very dangerous throw. Back late over the middle. Lucky to get away with that one. Second catch for Robinson on the day. McGloin to the air again, dumps it off to Zornich. And Zornich gets the first down. Out 
near midfield. And Foy's banged out of play by Wabusi. 12-yard gain on the first down for the Nittany Lions. I tell you what, the NASCAR no huddle for Penn State on offense has been really effective, more effective, quite frankly, than Northwestern style of offensive play. But long to throw again. And a diving catch made. Robinson on the ground. He'll spot him right at the first down marker. Look like there's more zip on that ball today for McGloin for the most part. I see confidence. That's what I see in that throw and catch. I see, I see a quarterback that's very familiar with Allen Robinson and confident in his route running ability. All of a sudden, the momentum is back in Penn State's favor. Another pass play. And it's Carter on the catch. Spilled at the 34. By Campbell. Gain of six on first and ten. That was a great read both by McGloin and by the tight end Carter. They brought the blitz off the edge with Eric Guzzo, and they both read the hot read and got six yards on first down. Good play. And stay with two time injury. Two and a half to go. Second and four. McGloin, long throw, dropped. Carter with his second drop. The other came on the goal line. That one took a while to get there. Yeah, that one's a little low, and you know, McGloin last week threw a lot of balls low, and it was a lot because of his mechanics with his feet not towards the line of scrimmage. He's got to be perpendicular, and his left shoulder has to be at the target. When you try to throw the ball away from your body, the elbow comes down and it doesn't get there on time. Third and four, McGloin, and Mosby Felder couldn't hang on. Maybe behind him, but still catchable. So now fourth down, Penn State will probably go for it. They've already done it three times. They were lining up to go for it a fourth time before a penalty. This is the good test. I said inside the 35-yard line, he'll probably go for it. Once out the 34, let's see what he does here. Well, you're not going to try a field goal, so the question is, do you punt? go well, or no, punt? Yeah. No, it was a punt, or do you go for it? Because it's a tight ball game, three-point game. They've had some success pinning them inside the 10-yard line, but I agree with this decision here to go for it. Northwestern score came on the short field. They have not been able to move the ball consistently against Penn State. Timeout by Northwestern to talk about it here. So we'll see if uh, Bill O'Brien changes his mind here for the fourth down play. All right, all right Brian, we we're talking about Matt McGloin and his mechanics. So show us. First of all, the, the proper way to throw yeah, well, it, and there may be some of the things that McGloin's been doing incorrectly. Well, well we, he, when he's in trouble, he throws the ball. If I'm throwing the ball to you on your couch at home, I don't want to have my shoulders parallel. I want to have them perpendicular. McGloin gets in trouble when he throws the ball like this. One of the drills that Bill O'Brien was talking to us about last night, which he actually learned from Tom Brady in New England, was just to have the coach put a hand on the left shoulder to make sure that shoulder stays perpendicular and in line with where you want to throw the football. I thought it was a really unique way, a creative way for Bill O'Brien to help Matt McGloin with some of his mechanics. Did I hurt you there? Fourth down and four on the 34-yard line. McGloin control. And that's incomplete. Just trying to push it to Zordich. And so Northwestern takes over on downs with two timeouts left. Two minutes and 20 seconds to work with, and Bill O'Brien is like, "What are you doing?" Yeah, and that, you know, these are the these are the things, the mechanics that you know Matt McGloin just hasn't had, and it's it's hard to teach a 22-year-old kid in a short amount of time how to do things fundamentally sound. And right there, it looks really ugly, but in Matt McGloin's head, he thinks he's going to get tackled from behind, so it's almost like a hot potato. I got to get rid of it on fourth down, and we all see nobody around. Trevor Simeon at quarterback for Northwestern. He's got a strong arm. The pass was there. Malcolm Willis came over late and may have gotten a hand on it. It was intended for Tony Jones. Malcolm Willis had the coverage. Boy, that ball was thrown no, well. just dropped. Yeah, it's got to be caught. Yeah, but that went picking up. Not an easy throw. Simeon to the air again. Oh, it gets crunched, but delivers it. And Gerald Hodges rips down the receiver at the 38-yard line. It was caught by Christian Jones, but he paid for it. Gain of four yards, and they go quickly to the line for third and six. Simeon. Deep pass. Broken up, but a flag. Stephon Moore is tipped in, but a penalty 
marker in. Penalty flag thrown. Stephon Morris was in front of the That's receiver. Defense number 12. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Let's see, did he have his off hand on the receiver when he tipped the ball? You see his left hand there, but that's a bad call. Well, I, I don't know if that was the call, though, Dave. It may have been before that, but uh, certainly from that view, he wasn't even touching the receiver. Bad call. First down on the 47 of Penn State. Simeon, time to throw, open in the middle of the field is Trumpy. He's loose inside the 35. Finally down after a 16-yard gain at the 31 by Glenn Carson. And again, Northwestern getting up there quickly to snap the ball, but there's an injured Penn State player at Stephon Morris. Two timeouts remaining, a minute 40 to work with. It's Pat Fitzgerald, Fitzgerald yeah, fired up. <laughs> he, he was worried about his players <laughs> being too excited. Well, he said that didn't work. For, to get, forget <laughs> that. You know, we didn't score any points in the first quarter. Now I'm going to get back to being who I am, who is a very fiery, emotional coach. What did he say down on the field to you? I, I'd love to strap it up for one more down just so I could hit you again. Isn't that what he said to you? Yeah, he, he hit me a number of times. And that, that face, that stare, that intensity is very familiar. I looked across the line for two years at that face right there. And brings back bad memories. What a great, what a great player. Two-time national defensive player of the year. Nagurski, award winner. Didn't make it in the NFL. Tried coaching, and then when Randy Walker passed away, as you know, he got the job at age 31. Since then, he's won a lot of games. He's had other schools interested, but says, no, I'm staying in Northwestern. He's got great new facilities coming. He feels like they're in the best place they've been from a recruiting standpoint. And they can somehow win today. He's 6-0 for the first time in 50 years. Yeah, and he smells it right now, the opportunity. They have not played their best football in this first half. But they have a great chance right now. First down on the 30-yard line. Plenty of time on the clock. They could go in half time with the lead on the road. They have not played their best football. Semi on second down. Dumps it off to Trumpy. And he is hit at the 25. Thrown down by Mike Hall at the 24. Clock running. We near one minute to go. Northwestern can take its time if it wants. Two timeouts remain. And they have a good field goal kicker. Unlike Penn State, their kicker is 11 of 11 on the year and has a strong leg. Simeon on second and short. Good throw for a first down inside the 15 to Demetrius Fields. I really Trevor Simeon has done on this drive. He's showing patience, not forcing the ball downfield, taking check downs to Trumpy, throwing the short rounds on a slant, just keeping this offense moving in this two minute situation. Clock at 45 and counting. Pressure coming. Simeon's pass incomplete, intended for Fields at the five. So the clock stopped with 40 seconds left. And two timeouts. I think right here they've thrown the ball exclusively on this drive. There's plays, there's lanes in the middle of this defense right now for them to run the football. They've got two timeouts. The clock should be no issue right now. It's all about how can we get yardage. Well, Coulter's in the game. He's in the slot. And Simeon stays in the game at quarterback. There's Coulter at number two. Check again coming from the Northwestern sideline. They got a hustle. Play clock at three. Timeout. They need a timeout. And they call it. Fitzgerald runs down and calls it with one on the play clock. So they have to burn a timeout with the clock stop. That's frustrating. Well, it's it's he was trying to do too much there. The crowds into it. You know, he was waiting, quite frankly, from the sideline. So don't put it all on the quarterback. It took a long time to get the play from the line of scrimmage, too. So you got to hold those coaches accountable. Well, Penn State led this game 10-0. The Nittany Lions dominated the first quarter. And a one-yard touchdown run from Zach Swinnick. And a muffed punt 
by Della Valley, which resulted in a Northwestern touchdown, Benrick Martin. Northwestern had the short field and capitalized. And now the Wildcats had the ball second and ten at the Penn State 11 with 40 seconds left and one timeout. Simeon at quarterback. Flanked by Tyrus Jones. Simeon going in zone. Almost picked off after the redirection intended for Kane Coulter. And Malcolm Willis, the safety, was behind him. Both had a chance at the football. Yeah, another high throw. He had Coulter there if that ball was just a little bit lower. Coulter could have made that play, but the third lower and see Trevor Simeon throw high. Perfectly thrown ball. Again, watch hold the linebacker. He's the one responsible for the deep middle. Steps up just a fraction. And that time the high throw worked out for Simeon. Great catch by Tony Jones. First touchdown for him. Last year had a knee injury. Such a key player for this Northwestern offense because he can make plays and he did there. Nice catch as Northwestern has the lead. And as we talked about, Northwestern has not played their best football in this first half. And they knew it was going to be an emotional game coming in. They've made mistakes. But Pat Fitzgerald knows how big that touchdown is to go up before halftime on the road, having not played your best ball. He knows they're in great shape. And you get the sense that he, talking to him last night, you know, he's not going to say it explicitly, but he knows the landscape of the Big Ten. He knows how many of these teams, Michigan, Michigan State, Wisconsin, and Brad, that have been struggling so far this year. And he sees opportunity. And this young team is getting better and better each week. This offense with Coulter and Simeon is unique. And I think they're going to score some people the rest of the year. Squid kick. Man. Yancich had trouble with it. It's picked up by Kenny. And he gets planted at the 30 yard line. Two timeouts left for Penn State. 24 seconds remaining. We'll see if uh, Bill O'Brien, you know, in the NFL, you're used to, hey, you just go out there and you play. You don't take a knee. But now he's got to kind of change uh, maybe the philosophy because you're at your 30 yard line and you really have enough time to get in position to get points. I would throw it because in college the, the clock stops you get a first down so you really have a lot of options. He's not going to. He's going to take it to the uh, to that clubhouse. So after the muffed punt Northwestern capitalizes with a touchdown and the Wildcats with another score to take the lead. And Northwestern will start the second half on offense. Pat Fitzgerald standing by with Jim. Thanks, Dave. Coach, we saw you fired up over here on the sidelines. Obviously, a momentum swing in your favor. How do you keep yeah. that going? Well, Jen, you know, we thought we had to weather the first quarter storm. We didn't make it need to make it that hard on us. Only six plays. Give a lot of credit to Penn State. They did a great job. But we settled down. Hopefully, we'll keep the momentum going. Big, big drive here to start the third quarter. We felt the wind picked up down here. How are you guys going to deal with that? Hopefully, well. <laughs> but uh, it's definitely a factor. Now the sun comes out, it'll probably slow down a little bit. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Dave. Well, Pat's voice was perfect yesterday in our meeting, so he lost it here in 30 minutes of game time. 14-10, his team on front, trying to stay unbeaten. Here's Penn State 
Started 0-2, but has won three in a row, playing really well on offense. Despite 46 plays and 20 minutes time of possession, only 10 points. And Northwestern will start with a ball. Ficken kicking it. Hey, he's missed six from like 25 <laughs> yards, but he puts it through the uprights from 75. <laughs> but it will come out to the 25, so. Hey, anytime the ball goes through the uprights for him, he's happy. <laughs> Northwestern ran only 34 plays. They're averaging about 82, but here we go. This is a guy that struggled all year to make the short ones. And yeah, he, there it is. I think it hit our camera. Doesn't matter. It comes out to the 25. Hey, he went through. He did make a field goal. And that first quarter. It's not going to help his conversation with, uh, with the coach saying, hey, you can't make it from 35, you can't from 75. Big hole down the middle of the defense as Edward Mark, again, between the tackles, having success. A game of 11 for Mark, who is averaging over 100 yards on the ground per game, a, a former wide receiver. They need to get Venrick Mark going in this game. He can obviously, you know, he can catch the ball out of the backfield as a former wideout, but he is really impressed in the running game between the tackles. Pressure coming, Simeon Hill. And Simeon sacked at the 31 by Jordan Hill. That's exactly what we were talking about, bringing more pressure from Ted Roof. They bring the linebacker off one side, and that leaves a single for Jordan Hill. And anytime he's singled up, especially against a young offensive right guard in Dieters, he is going to be handled. But he's fresh. You know, he only was on the field for 10 minutes in that first half, and he's a guy that plays all three downs for them, maybe their best defensive player. Coulter is in a quarterback for second and 15. And it's Mark straight ahead. And Jared Hodges nails it as he got back to the original line of scrimmage, so it'll bring up third down and long. We'll see if they keep Coulter in at QB or go with Simeon here on a passing down. I get the sense that the conversation in the Penn State locker room at halftime with Ted Roof and this defense and the leaders, Hodges, Hill, this, this, this unit is going to come out in the second half, inspire, and start to attack and come after this Northwestern offense. This Simeon a quarterback for third and ten. Simeon with Tom on a drag run. It's caught. Short of the first down is Tony Jones. Good open field tackle by Malcolm Willis to force a punt from Northwestern. Well, it was a great call and protection by the offensive line. They brought the blitz on the weak side. You're going to see it come from this side, and this offensive line turns that way, and, and then you have the rotation of the safeties. You force a throw underneath, and now the key is make the tackle, and Malcolm Willis was up to the task. Down the back, has to back up. Got to let this one go. And down to the 20-yard line. So a three and out for Penn State's defense. Now its offense takes the field after Matt McGloin threw for 132 yards in that first half. And 28 pass attempts. And you see almost two to one in the time of possession and really the turnover, the muff punt leading to seven points and then the two minute drive at the end is the difference in this ball game for Northwestern. We have not seen Bill Belton since the opening series of tailback at Zach Zwinnick again at running back and McGloin will throw it's tipped at the line incomplete. Tyler Scott breaking up the pass done that a handful of times this year. He's got that club on his hand. He's got a, a, something wrong with his hand broken hand and you can see he gets that big club up there and clubs that ball away. He's not going to catch it but he's certainly get that hand out of there. It's very difficult to play defense with that. When I play with guys that have those clubs and you can't grab anything. Fourth pass breakup for the defensive line. Second down and ten. The run. So we got a on the right edge. He's up to the 28-yard line. Penn balls forward for another yard of the 29, where he's greeted by Campbell. So it brings up third down and a long yard. They block by the tight end. Lehman on the edge. He gets the seal. That's exactly. 
Michael was one out because they were getting inside. Zordich in the backfield for third down and short. Three tight ends. Swinak running behind Zordich, and on the cutback, he gets the first down to the 32. They had been running back out by committee in part because of injuries here in the first month of the season, but it looks more and more like Zach Swinak is becoming the feature back. Yeah, well, and I think he's reliable, and you know what you're going to get with Zach Swinak. You're going to get hard running, downhill, one cut. I think Bill O'Brien really likes that style from Zach Zwillian. So first down on the 32. But Lloyd setting up the screen to Zwillian. And Zwillian makes a nice move in the backfield to elude a tackler and get to the 38 for six yards. Gigi Araguza, the leading tackler for Northwestern, made the stop. And that, that's a play, Dave, that's typically designed for, for a guy like Bill Belton that has a lot of open field moves. And so you can see how much Bill O'Brien is really putting on the plate of Zach Swinak. He is doing everything in this offense now. Really has become a feature back. They go with three wide here. Second and four. Swinak again. And he's able to break the tackle, keep the feet moving, and get the first down. Tyler Scott, the hit, but a nice power run by Zach Swinak. Yeah, the linebacker had a free run out of here. Watch, he just bounces off. Then another guy, defensive tackle, bounces off. He's not going to go down with arm tackles with one guy. It's that determination and effort that's really separating him from the other backs on this team. 53 yards on 14 carries for Zwinak and a one-yard touchdown run. Here he is again on a draw play in the Wildcat territory. Bounces off two more defenders and takes it to the 43 yard line. The team yard pickup. Well, it's the Zach Swinak drive here. Watch the, watch the vision and patience. He waits for the, the defensive tackle to cross his face and then he waits for the kick out. And a nice hole opens up. But if he were too fast into that hole, that defensive end that was crashed, he could have made that play. Three-yard line. Swinak again. He's touched it on every play of this drive, either rushing or receiving. Tyler Scott with a tackle at the 39, a four-yard game. Well, Bill O'Brien told us yesterday that in that game against Illinois, he didn't know which one of his four backs he was going to play the most, and he just wanted to wait to see who got the hot hand. You hear that sometimes from coaches. Who's going to have the hot hand? I'll stick with him. And when he just saw the power, Swinak was running downhill. He said, that's my guy. And right now, I would be surprised if he did anything other than turn the hand into him on this drive. Although, you never think play action's coming at some point. And there it is, play fed. He was looking downfield, but Robinson was covered. Not directing traffic. And Mosby Felder came open, but McLean couldn't hit him. So it's third down and six. Well, you called it. Unfortunately, Northwestern's defense was ready for it as well. They wanted to throw the ball deep down the field. Unfortunately, they only had two receivers out in the route. There was no check down and had an opportunity. Nice job by Felder of getting open. Ball just thrown too high. Penn State, two of 11 on third down, and both their conversions were on third and one. And again, we'll see if in this position on the field, if Bill O'Brien plays it as if it's second down, meaning he'd run a second down play rather than you know, throwing a pass at the first down line. But he will throw him right at the first down marker. Nice grab by Kyle Carter. And Carter carries defenders to the 25. 14-yard pickup. And a first down for Penn State. They really like the hands of Kyle Carter. He's just going to come up and run an out route. This ball, again, thrown a little bit behind him. And great hands to go back and catch that football and then take the hit for Carter. I know he's had a couple of drops, but I think we're going to be talking about this kid for a while. He, he's a Richard freshman from Delaware, but over 20 catches on the year. And obviously, in this offense, tight ends are going to get good numbers. Back to Zwinak on first down, and not much. Northwestern bottles him up. And after a gain of two, the defensive tackles aren't felt. 
And McEvely was shaken up earlier in the game. Team up on the tackle for Northwestern. This is a little bit different offensive style that we've seen all year from Bill O'Brien in this offense because they've been pass first, run second. This drive has been the exact opposite, throwing the ball only on third down to convert. 11th play of the drive. Coming up. McLean going to go to the end zone. Single coverage with Robinson. There was contact and a flag comes down. Quinn Evans trying to defend the best receiver for Penn State, Allen Robinson. And he didn't really need to. I mean, Robinson was on the boundary, almost out of bounds. He didn't need to interfere. Pass interference. Defense number 31. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Put the ball inside the 10. Take a look, Robinson will be, he doesn't give himself any room to catch this ball. And Evans didn't need to push him out of bounds. He doesn't get his head turned around and you don't see the football. You're going to get in trouble. Quinn Evans, who Pat Fitzgerald's really excited about him. He transferred. He was at Stanford for four years and graduated. Uh, he had a medical uh, issue with hardship, and now he's on this squad for Northwestern, but uh, not a small play. Zordich is the back. Two tight ends on first down and goal. Here's Zordich, and he bounces off the initial hitter, and then brought down by Eric Guzzo, and maybe a yard there. A second down and goal coming up. Zordich, whose father played here, now an assistant coach with the Philadelphia Eagles. A lot of players on this Penn State team whose fathers or uncles played here. And very proud trying to carry on the tradition that obviously was scarred from the Sandusky situation. By the way, Sandusky will face sentencing on Tuesday. Obviously, that'll be a big story nationally, especially here at State College. Play clock at three. McLaughlin in the gun. McLaughlin waiting. Robinson comes up, and it's a touchdown. He got it. And Penn State is back on top. The defensive player of the week in the Big Ten and the national defensive player of the week makes the stop. Up tempo as usual for Northwestern. They snap it quickly. Simeon running the option. Here's Mark, and Mark is loose. All the way to the 47 yard line. He got drilled, but he hung on to the ball. Stephon Morris with the tackle. 14 yard gain. Fenrick Marks, one of those players that's a threat to go the distance on any snap. Anytime he touches that ball, Penn State cannot afford to let him get any kind of crease. Simeon throws it to Demetrius Fields, who gets about four yards to midfield. You see early in this drive for Northwestern, the ball on the perimeter. They've run the ball quite a bit on the inside of this defense throughout three quarters, but now Second down and long. Simeon in the traffic. Caught. First down at the 40 yard line. Kane Coulter, who is the quarterback, and then last week had nine receptions in the win over Indiana with a nice catch that time for a first down. He's an impressive kid, but an even better player. I mean, he's just tough, runs good routes. Coaches think he could be a receiver at the next level. He's explosive. On the drop inside the 30 yard line as Christian Jones was open. You can tell going back to Simeon late second quarter, he's got it going now. That pass he threw to was a touchdown in today's streak of 14 consecutive rushing touchdowns. They haven't had a passing touchdown since the first game. Yeah. A lot of that had to do with the fact that Kane Coulter was playing quarterback. Now it's very interesting. This offense has shifted from a running offense to a passing offense. 
Here's Mark finding a crease. And Mark has a first down to the 29. I'm a little bit confused as to why Penn State is not ganging up on veteran Mark. You can't tackle him in space with one guy. You don't have to worry about Trevor Simeon keeping the ball in the running game. You need to get two guys on veteran Mark. Mark 61 yards rushing and a touchdown. First down from inside the 30. Here's Mark again. And it's a good run. Four yards to the 25-yard line. So we near the five-minute mark in the third quarter, and Penn State on top. I watched Mike Maudie on that last play, and just one shuffle step to the quarterback opened up the lane and got four yards for Mark. Now you got to be wary of the quarterback run here. Coulter, quarterback. Mark next to him. And the pitch to Mark. Trying to find a hole, and he does. Brought down at the 18-yard line, close to a first down. Good patience that time to wait for that hole to open up, huh? Absolutely. And if you're Ted Roof, this is what you worried about at halftime. You feel more comfortable with Trevor Simeon in the passing game and rushing your defensive line on this offensive line. When they come out and spread you out and play the perimeter game, that's tough to handle. Simeon is in a quarterback. Trumpy at running back, so... And Coulter lined up a receiver. Simeon in the pocket underneath. Caught at the 15-yard line by Coulter. He gets to the 14. No gain of four for the guy that started at quarterback every game until Simeon started last week at QB. Two catches on this drive for Coulter now 11 on the year. Lined up a receiver again. And Simeon at quarterback. Quick throw to the flat to Christian Jones. Makes the first man miss, and now a penalty flag comes in. Monty made the tackle. Gain of maybe a yard, but let's see what the penalty flag is. And it's a hold on Northwestern. It would have been third down and about five. Instead, it's you know, second down and more than ten. Holy. Offense number 21. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. Repeat second down. Kyle Prater, wide receiver on the hole. Yeah, they asked receivers to block quite a bit on the edge because you've got a perimeter game and Prater just gets locked on there. Pat Fitzgerald says we play our best offense when we go fast and penalties slow you down in addition to the yardage. Second down and 16. Keep in mind the field goal kicker for Northwestern is pretty good. He's 11 of 11 on the year. Simeon. Steps up, runs, middle of the field is open. He's at the 15. Dives for the first down. And he's going to come up just short. Tripped up by Obing Ajapong, but good recognition by Simeon to take off and get almost 15 yards. Yeah, he's not known for, for his mobility, but when, when he's given the chance, he can certainly make you pay with his feet. Third down. touchdown and seventh this season for Kane Coulter and Northwestern retakes the lead late in the third he's the X factor in the red zone and that's why they've had so much success getting in the end zone running the football is because you don't know whether to tackle Venrick Mark or stay outside for Kane Coulter and that's a killer inside the 10 yard line Brad Zine has never missed an extra point in his career. Now 72 of 72 with 312 to play here in the third. Adrian Amos and Jesse Della Valley will be the deep men. Not as windy as it was in the first half. Short kick, Amos from the three. Amos lost the ball but fumbled it out of bounds, so it'll be Penn State ball around the 25. Let's check in with Reese Davis. Conference play in college football, NFL action. 
as uh, McGlone dumps it off to Zordich. He makes the man miss and appears to have a first down. Bobby on the stop. Good job by Zordich out in space. Go back and take a look at the touchdowns. The threat of Kane Coulter puts pressure on defensive ends. Watch C.J. Olani on here. He's going to have to read the quarterback. And Coulter's reading Olani on. He pulls it late, and this is where, you know, Kane Coulter can break ankles. You can't be right in that situation. And olani has got to break down in that situation and take the quarterback because he's the one that's the most threat. But watch how late Coulter pulls this ball. It's in there. It teaches that running back to have soft hands, and then he pulls it away from him. That is great ball handling from Kane Coulter. Man, an even better look from our camera crew. Olani in a backup defensive end. Proby, the middle linebacker for Northwestern, was hurt on that last play. Colin Ellis comes in to replace him. First down, Penn State on its 34. Here's Zorn to his lined up at tailback, and he's driven to the ground. A gain of maybe one. Let's check it with Jen Brown on the field. Well, right after that touchdown when Penn State came off the field, defensive line coach Larry Johnson went right up to C.J. Olani on and said, that was your play. You've got the quarterback. You missed that. They've been sitting over here. Obviously, C.J. not uh, not feeling too good about what he did. Gerald Hodges went up to him and said, C.J., we're all tired. you got to get in this. Well, Pat Fitzgerald told us yesterday he wants to see a lot of those number twos out there for Penn State. Olani is a number two, although he's in the rotation, gets a lot of plays. He's not a starter. But going up play action and a penalty flag down the play. Troubles sacked at the 19 yard line. Trying to set up play action to go deep to Robinson. Sacked by McEvely, but there's a holding call, so let's see what they do if they decline the penalty or accept it. Offense number 76. The penalty's declined. Brings up third down. Yeah, Donovan Smith just got out of out of position here and got beat badly at the left tackle position. Just on a rush up, up the field and then yanked. On the jersey of Deontay Gibson. Now we talked about Pat Fitzgerald wanting to see the twos of Penn State on defense. Uh, conversely, the twos for Northwestern, he beat those are pretty good. They're young, Deontay Gibson, Dean Lowry, Redshirt, and true freshman respectively. They've made some plays this year. And that was Gibson. Third and 24 for Penn State. And it's a screen to Zorich. And he's out past the 20. Wrestled down at the 21. Gain of only a yard at Penn State will punt. Good stop by this Northwestern defense. On the last drive, they looked susceptible to the running game and the power game of Zwinak. That time came out, made some adjustments, and Pat Fitzgerald gets a stop for his defense. And Alex Butterworth will boot it away to Venrick Mark. A very good return, man. He's got a pump return for a touchdown this year. This is a great kick. Mark backs up, fields it at his 25. Able to make the first guy miss, though. Mark past the 40. Mark with the kicker to beat. Mark inside the 30. State in bounds. Touchdown, Northwestern. A 75-yard touchdown on a punt return for Venrick Mark. And now the Wildcats take a 10-point lead late in the third. The best punt returner in the Big Ten and maybe the country is Venrick Mark. Great punt by Penn State, but sometimes when you outkick your coverage, a 54-yard punt, a 75 yard return as a result. Got an 82 yarder earlier in the season. A 75 yarder here. Bud Zine's extra point gives Northwestern a 11 point lead. With a great athlete at punt returner, you just need a couple of blocks. They get a block on hole, and then a, one guy out of position, and there's no way the punter is going to be able to keep up with one of the fastest guys on the field. Second touchdown today, a rushing touchdown earlier. And now a punt return touchdown as Northwestern looks to go to 6 0 for the first time in a half century. They've got an 11 point lead with 50 seconds to go here in the third. 
Four minutes to go third there quarter. are some explosive players on this Northwestern offense. Certainly are, and, and you got to give credit to, to Pat Fitzgerald and, and the kinds of players that he's been able to recruit to Northwestern. You know, they have a different recipe, much like they do at Stanford, although the offense looks completely different. It's the same kind of student athlete that they recruit to Northwestern, and he's now find some athletes. Kane Coulter took out of Colorado. He goes and gets Venrick Mark. Uh, some of these players at the skill positions that can really add another dimension to your team and all of these guys they've always played tough and they've always played smart in Northwestern but all of a sudden now they've got some explosive players that can play in the Big Ten. Special teams a problem this year for Penn State with the field goal kicking we've seen muff punts that have led to touchdowns and now they give up a punt return for a score. Still a lot of time left. Penn State's got a pretty good offense. Alex Kenny doesn't even make it to the 20. Wrapped up at the 19. Jimmy Johnson, Dale Earnhardt Jr. highlight a star-studded field as the chase for the Sprint Car Championship heads to legendary Talladega Speedway, the longest and most treacherous circuit NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Talladega. Sunday, one on ESPN. Now, if you're Penn State, you continue to run your offense. They've been running the ball more here in the third, or is it more on McGloin to throw the football? Well, that, that has been their offense coming in today is, is McGloin throwing the football, but I don't think they need to panic at all. Just run their offense. Not one plays in this third quarter. No one here is winning that left tackle. He didn't get much, maybe a yard. Again, Northwestern's done a pretty good job for the most part today against the run. Chance, Chance Carter with the stop. And they give up 90 yards per game on the ground. That leads the Big Ten 13th in the country. Today they've given up 79 rushing yards. See if Penn State wants to snap it here before the fourth quarter. Second down and nine. McLaughlin, long throw, caught. Short of the first down is Winnack. Third and two coming up when we start the fourth quarter. Northwestern ranked for the first time in four seasons. They have not been 6-0 since 1962. But this is a very good road team. They've won nine of their last 14 Big Ten road games. Many of those have come in November. They've not been a good October team, but Pat Fitzgerald trying to turn that around and start with a road win in State College. Big third down and two for the Nittany Lions. The runs win out. And he's got the first down. And finally brought down at the 36 yard line by Jared Carpenter. If I'm Bill O'Brien offensively right now, I might think about getting back into that NASCAR package. It worked really well in the first half for uh, Penn State. I think their rhythm was uh, was good. Might want to try doing that once more. So we're not on first down. And no running room there. What about the tight ends? We, we haven't seen a lot out of Lehman and Carter in the second half. Well, the second half has been mostly running the football, so they've been blocking. Lehman has done a nice job on the edge as these guys get into the NASCAR package we talked about, but they haven't been throwing the ball. And we're here on play action. McGloin dumps it off. Zwinnick out across the 35. Wrapped up at the 38. That's a six-yard pickup. Proby, who was shaken up earlier, is back out there and makes the play. Good decision there by, by Matt McGloin. He tried to have a, a play to go down the field, but just drop the ball off to your back on the check down and make sure you get positive yards. Play action again, and there's the tight end, Lehman, with a first down catch at the 43-yard line. Lehman came in with nine catches and a couple of touchdowns. So first down for Penn State as they continue with the up-tempo. Ball at the Nittany line, 44. Swift running around. And gets maybe three. Quinn Williams there for Northwestern. See a lot of runs on first down and passes on second down from Bill O'Brien in this in this no huddle system. I wonder if at some point they'll start to incorporate play action on first down. I get the tight end flexed out to the bottom of the screen. Kyle Carter 
the blowing draw the other way. And the pass was a little off the mark. Robinson went to the ground to make the catch in Northwestern territory, a four yard gain. It brings up another third down and short. And right now it's all about speed and distribution. Speed with which they snap the football and they're trying to distribute the ball to as many of their playmakers as they can. They don't need to take a shot downfield. Northwestern was out of position on the snap. There's a man wide open. Levin is standing wide right open and snapped the pass underneath. It's caught by Robinson at the 40 for a first down. But Lehman was down the seam and was wide open. Let's see what the penalty flag is. It's a first down anyway. Unless it's against Penn State, but boy, Lehman was free. Northwestern wasn't set up in Best the secondary. Fears. Defense, number 31. The penalty's declined. Result of the play is a first down. So it's a first down, but it could have been more, Brian. Yeah, they ran a four vertical. Here's Lehman. He's going to come up the field, and the defender's just going to fall down. And Matt McGloin, unfortunately for Penn State, was working the other side of the field and never saw him. It's hard sometimes. That's just a clear route. You're not looking that way. Don't make it excuses for the quarterbacks. <laughs> Good job keeping his balance and then powers to the 33 for seven yards. He's spoken like a guy who's been up in the press box yes. on the side yes. of the field. <laughs> no shame in saying that. Second down and three. Another run. Swin out. Good play in the backfield. Wabusi well, with the hit. And so a one yard gain, third and two. Stay quickly up to the line. His receivers don't know what play they've got going. Oh, the oh, oh, quarterback sneak, and they get it. Now, was that the coach or was that McGloin who did that? Well, it's hard to know. Uh, it could have been either. But the thing I liked about what Matt McGloin did was make sure you're in a legal formation. A lot of times as a quarterback, you see that opening and you want to snap it fast, but if you get a penalty, it's not worth it. Good drop by Penn State from the 29. Swinney on a dive for a yard. He was grabbed at the ankles. So he gets positive yardage. Proby in there from his middle linebacker spot. Penn State continues with the up tempo. They got both Lehman and Carter, the two tight ends on the left side of the formation. Play action. McGloin waits and dumps it off. Zwinak inside the 20. And Zwinak finally brought down out of bounds inside the 15 yard line by Proby. And Zwinak shaking up on the play. Great read again by McGloin. They wanted to take a shot down the field. It's not there. Give it to your back. Stay on schedule. Convert first downs. Been impressed with the lack of chaos and panic from this offense. This drive. Here's Zornich in for Zwinak. And he gets popped in the backfield for a loss. Wabusi in there. A setback of two. So second down and 12 from the 14 yard line. Trust him. He didn't trust him. You can't blame him for not trusting. 
They can still get a first down without the touchdown. McGraw stepping up. Wait, throwing. Robinson diving. Touchdown, Penn State. All right, forget the field goal. For two. Yep, try to make it a three-point game. Yep. Seven touchdown catch for Robinson to lead the Big Ten. Twelve touchdown pass for McGloin. Let's see if they go shotgun and spread it out again here. And they will. Penn State going for two. He's in. How about that call? Three-point game. When the game's on the line and you need two yards, I love putting the ball in Mike Zorich's hands. He's been the heart and soul of this defense, this offense, along with Mike Barney. And if it, do you continue to go up tempo here if you're the Wildcats? You try to slow it down a little bit. Absolutely, no. You, you are who you are, and when you. You go fast, as Pat Fitzgerald said, they play their best football. And I don't think that they feel that 28 points is going to be enough to win this game. There's Mark. Last time he touched it, he took it to the house and a punt return. They'll try to do it here on a kick return. But he won't even get to the 25. In fact, he's pushed back at the 18. And the crowd erupting here after that special teams play. Henrik Mark shut down there. Northwestern ball inside its 20. Wildcats have a three-point lead. The young team on the road trying to get a huge win to get them to 6-0 for the first time in a half century. And they'll run the football on first down. Trumpy stood on. Minimal gain on the play. Money is there for the Nittany Lions. Mike Hall as well. They'll give him two yards to the 20 on that carry. Monty, Hodges, Hill, Daquan Jones, all those guys in the front seven for Penn State in that timeout. They're trying to get this crowd into it. Where they can do that best is to continue to make plays like that one. Coulter's in a quarterback now. And he'll give to Trumpy off the left side. Nice play by Monty. Brought down after another two-yard game. So third and six coming up. Not even a sitting in there to throw the ball, right, for this play, third yes. and six. Yes. Side is 10. Della Valley and Lewis are deep. Remember, there was a muck punt in the first half by Penn State. They should get good field position. Kicking into a little bit of a win. And Lewis going to let this one go. And this works out very well for Northwestern. Wow. Penn State was thinking they had the ball around the 40, and Penn State starting on its 15 yard line in this drop. And here's the win. And a nice hole off the right side of the 21. Roby made the tackle, but it's a six-yard game. We mentioned they had a 92-yard drive, so they're trying to put together a long drive here, maybe in the game. But you got to start wondering how much gas the Northwestern defensive front still has. They're on the field, as you said, for most of that fourth quarter. 
And can they put a seven minute drive together? They also have problems with a field goal kicker. Mosby Felder with a catch for progress will be close to the first down. Campbell made the tackle. They'll spot him just short. It'll be third and one. And that time Mike Hankwitz decides to come with some pressure. We haven't seen a lot of blitz from Northwestern in this game, but I think he senses that his group was getting tired as well. And the quarterback sneak. Yeah, looks like the end up, and certainly in the second effort he did. First down. How about this? As McLaurin's fired up. It's the 83rd play run by Penn State to 52 for Northwestern. McLaurin, the senior. Man, look at him. One of the more vocal guys in the offseason season about staying together. And he's become a leader on this team. Didn't really play under the previous staff until the end of last year. McLaurin, Robinson comes free in the middle of the field. The 44 yard line before he dragged down by Nick Van Hoos. 18 yards. Allen Robinson's the best wide receiver on this Penn State team and hasn't really gotten out in this game. That time, wide open. The run's winning here. Those dives to the 47 yard line. Three yards before Quentin Williams makes the stop. There's no reason for Penn State to do anything differently than they did in the last drive, and that was to complete balls. And you see now Matt McLoy's got 31 on the day. Unbelievable career high for him, and it has a lot to do with him being patient, taking the check down, throwing down the backs, and staying on the They go empty here on second and seven. McLoy's pass. Hot diving play made by Carter. Third and short coming up. Again, McLoy not making the bad play today. Only two interceptions on the year. 12 touchdowns. And Kyle Carter with four catches, third down and two. He'll go empty again here. Something Bill O'Brien likes. He says, not sure all the other guys in the staff like it, but I loved it with Brady, and I'm going to let McGloin do it as well. There's Robinson, got some blocks on that screen, and picks up another Penn State first down. Football team is the offensive line coach. Because he doesn't get any help from anybody but his five guys, but the empty formation has really been positive for Penn State today. Wrong play on first down as well. All the way to the 20. 15-yard run. They are leaning on Northwestern right now. Running on first down. Throwing on second and third down. Northwestern's trying to get set of defensive linemen in. Mike Hankwitz, defensive coordinator, who's concerned about his front. They were getting pushed around here in late the fourth. Five minutes to go, ball to 27, play action. McGloin looking deep, firing end zone. Robinson jumped there, can't come down with it. Defended by Nick Van Hoos. This is the third time they've run this play downfield, and this time Robinson had a chance, but credit Van Noos. Great job getting his hand on the football, just a redshirt freshman learning how to play the position. Going up against one of the best in the Big Ten. Second and 10 at the 27. Empty set. Short throw, McGloin caught at the 22-yard line by Lehman. All right, Brian, do you handle third down like it's second down? Because for, it'd be about a 40-yard field goal, but obviously the, the kicker, Fickett, at three for nine on the year is unreliable. No, this is a different situation. Five minutes left in the game, you're down three, you gotta get the first. Quarterback sneak there, he almost got it. It's kind of an interesting call, wasn't it there? Quarterback sneak, third down and five, he's short, fourth and two. Do you run that because you're, you know, you're going for it on fourth down? He ran that because he saw something on the defensive side that, that they wanted to take advantage of. But they're going to go for it. I think that was their mindset. It would be about a 37 yard field goal, but no. They go on fourth and two at the 19. And McGloin will throw. Has time. Flashed out. Looking. First complete. Must be Felder inside the 10. It's first and goal at the six.
Here's Winnick. Downs to the point. Clock will take us inside four minutes. Okay, now you're inside the 10. If you're Bill O'Brien, are you calling plays with field goal possibly in mind or no chance? I think he wants to go and score a touchdown here and win this ball game. What's, what's really impressive, Dave, is for college kids in this kind of environment with the game on the line to operate this quickly. There's a lot of decisions that are being made on the fly. That third down play, fourth down play, we're not going to discuss it. Now. Just get there and run it. Really impressive. They hope they will take time off the clock. McGloin to pass. McGloin hit. And McGloin down, lost the ball. Looks like Penn State recovered it, though, at the six yard line. It was chopped free by Tyler Scott. Wow. And McGloin appeared to get it back. It's Penn State ball, so third down and goal from just outside the five. There's Sam Fick and their kicker. We'll see again what the call is here on third down. If it's Going for the touchdown. Yeah, you got to, I, I still think you got to go for the win here. You know, you're going to be the football now. Don't hold the ball in the pocket and get sacked from behind. He's not there for our back in the end zone. I think Bill O'Brien senses we've bogged down a little bit here. And you know, my quarterback just fumbled. His brain might be scrambled. Let me call a timeout and discuss this on the sideline. I think it's a good timeout from Bill O'Brien. <laughs> They pass Brian Greasy, Jen Brown, Sam Fick, and the kicker may or may not be in a position to tie the game. It's third and goal from the five for Penn State. Yeah, this situation, Bill O'Brien loves to call two plays in the huddle and let his quarterback read the defense and get to the right play. That's how they score early in their game to Robinson. I fully expect them to do the same thing here. Watch from McGuire to check this potential at the line of scrimmage. Kenny a receiver in motion. McGloin flushed out. Rolling right. Might run. He will. He is in. Touchdown. Penn State retakes the lead. job with this senior quarterback Matt McGloin. <laughs> he saw Bill O'Brien. He started to celebrate and he said, wait a minute, no flags? Okay, now I can celebrate. They've run 95 plays. They've had a 12-play touchdown drive, an 18-play touchdown drive. That was a 15-play, 85-year touchdown drive. Northwestern can score quickly though and they got 237 with an dangerous return man where they kick it to better mark. They will. Mark has a punt return for a touchdown. And why they tell him to take a knee? Right. It'll come out to the 25. Here's Reese. And don't tell the best player on the field what to do. Turn around and get a block. They're going to go 75 yards. Simeon is the quarterback. Throws. Oh! Tipped. Incomplete. It should have been picked off by Morris. And then on the redirection. 
position. It was almost caught. And she was trying to fit it on the sideline, but that's a forced throw. Three guys back there. If you're Trevor Simeon now, take note of the situation. Two and a half minutes, you've got all three timeouts. You don't need to force anything, but as a young player, sometimes that's hard. Looks like Molly did, got a piece of it. They may have distracted Morris so who couldn't get the interception. Over the middle, that was with the official right there. It was thrown behind the intended receiver, Tony Jones. It's third down and ten. All right, if you don't get it, you got three timeouts, 228. Can you still punt here? Yeah, you can still punt, but I mean, you want to get a first down. Yeah, this is your opportunity, and Pat Fitzgerald feels confident, Trevor Simeon. Remember, let's go back to the first game of the year against Syracuse. He was seven of eight on the final drive to score the winning touchdown. So he's been in this situation before. Empty set, third and ten. Simeon with time that everybody covered. He'll run, and he should. He only got about three. Let's see what Northwestern does on fourth down and seven. Like they're going to go for it here. He may not, never get the ball back if you he punt might, it. So. You, you might not, but then again, you might not make fourth and seven. So the, the timeout situation of put this way is on your side. You will get the ball back. Even if you don't get it, you still can stop Penn State. They're not going to want to try a field goal. That's true. Fourth and seven. coming your way tonight on ABC at 8 Eastern 5 Pacific the other undefeated team in the Big Ten maybe the only one after this game's over Ohio State taking on Nebraska the Buckeyes with a big road win at Michigan State last week Northwestern coming off a come from behind home win against Wisconsin Northwestern entered this game unbeaten at 5 and 0 Meanwhile, Penn State, a team like Ohio State that can't play for a Big Ten championship, but obviously a pretty good football team. Just the fact they started 0-2, lose by one against Virginia, and here they are at a minute 43 away from winning their fourth straight game and going 2-0 in the conference. Well, what a job by, by Bill O'Brien, given all that he's had to deal with, the distractions, loss of players from transferring. Second and ten. Here's Zernich. Ball set up. Let's 
result of playing in possession of the runner for a touchdown. Ruling that really is under further review. His touchdown. Very hard to overturn unless obviously you are certain. Well, you start thinking about Penn State's schedule. All right, let's uh, look one more time here to see uh, if the ball crosses before the elbow hits. Yeah, from that angle, it's hard to, it's hard to tell. As you think about Penn State's schedule, is there anybody on the schedule that based on, well, we've seen Penn State a lot, three times now. Is there anybody they can't beat? No, there's not anybody they can't beat because the Big Ten is, has struggled so much this year. And if you look at you know, the rest of their schedule, yes, they're going to play Ohio State and they're going to play them here in the State College. And that's probably the biggest test that they're going to have. You know, they play Nebraska, certainly they play Wisconsin at the end of the year here. But if, if Penn State can continue to play the way that they did today defensively and then mix in offense. Further ado, yeah, only on the field stands. Touchdown. And you got to give so much of the credit. Yes, Bill O'Brien has stewarded, has stewarded this ship in a way that's been really unbelievable. But credit those seniors, those guys that came out and, and said, I'm going to stay. And these fans that said, we're going to stand behind you. I think that plays a lot into the success that they've had this year. You lose your leading rusher as the extra point is good. You lose your top seven receivers. You lose your kicker. You lose your head coach. You've got a first-time head coach. And you're going to be 4-2, 2-0 in the Big Ten, going into a bye week. you still got to go to Iowa. Still got Ohio State on the schedule, but you got Indiana here. A Purdue a team that many think is on the rise. They've got Michigan later today. I said this last week. If they get seven wins, it's very possible at this point you would fit a four right now. October 6th. I and mean, this guy has got to be in the discussion for Coach of the Year. Yeah. Given what he's had to deal with. It is amazing. Well, and, and for those people at home that are saying, you guys are overreacting. They're beating Northwestern. Northwestern is a good football team, and Northwestern is going to win a bunch of games in the Big Ten this year. Don't count out the Wildcats out of the Legends division either, because their team can beat anybody on their schedule, including Michigan State, who's had an uninspired uh, day against Indiana, Michigan, some of these other teams. So uh, both of these teams, I think, are at the upper echelon of the Big Ten. Well, Nebraska may have something to say about this, but it looks like the, right now the, the two best teams in the Big Ten are ineligible for the Big Ten championship, Ohio State and Penn State. So who's the next best team at this point? Maybe we see tonight if Nebraska can go to Columbus and win. Yep. Football is available anytime, anywhere on your computer or mobile device via watchespn.com and the Watch ESPN app. I know we'll be watching for those of us that get uh, the internet on our flights home. Watch some of the afternoon games and uh, tonight's game. Big SEC game, Georgia, South Carolina, 7 Eastern. You can see that on the Watch ESPN app and, of course, on ESPN. First down of the Northwestern 23. Simeon's pass is caught at the 30 yard line. Lawrence. Lock will continue to run. Northwestern has two timeouts left. Down 11. A 22 point run by Penn State. Simeon hit by Flutters and incomplete. So third down coming up. Sean Stanley and Pete Massaro collapse on the corner at 32. I think you got to give this Penn State defense credit in the second half. You know, they two scores in the first half. They gave it the score late. And then when this became a passing game in the second half for Northwestern, Penn State's defensive front and these linebackers got more aggressive and came after Trevor Simeon and made him uncomfortable on a consistent basis. to the first down, depending on the spot. Clock will run unless Northwestern calls a timeout, which, uh, no, they're not going to here. It is a first down clock stops for the moment there as they reset the ball. 
And they're going to keep their timeouts as we're inside a minute to go. Northwestern will play at Minnesota next week, then back to back home games against Nebraska and Iowa. Prater made the catch, but not much. Stand in bounds, and the clock continues to run. Think about this defense for Penn State. Remember, one of those touchdowns came after the month punt. Then you had a punt return, so they really only gave up 14 points to one of the best offenses in the Big Ten. They only gave up 239 yards of total offense. Somebody's got to start talking about this Penn State defense as yeah. one of the best in the Big Ten. I know Bill O'Brien's an offensive coach, but that credit for this resurgence of this team so far this year really needs to be with Ted Roof and these leaders on the defensive side. They, they held a team who got over 700 yards last week to 239 today. Simeon underneath Jones trying to get out of bounds. Can't lose the ball and it's picked up by Penn State. Daquan Davis recovers the fumble. This one's over. of the unbeaten. Again, they failed to get to 6-0. Third time in the last five years, they started 5-0. But today, the story is Penn State. Bill O'Brien's team has won four in a row. They are 2-0 in the Big Ten. And they come from 11 down after that punt return for a touchdown. They storm back to win it. And Bill O'Brien is with Jen Bryant. Thanks, Dave. Coach? <laughs> Get to the bed. Congratulations, Coach Zordix, Winnack. What do you think about their ability to run the ball today? I just think, uh, you know, we got a special group of kids, uh, tough kids. Talking about how tough they are, you guys started with dropping your first two. You've answered back, winning your last four. What does that say about this team, given all that you guys have been through? Just a resilient bunch of guys, you know, and uh, we got a great senior class. We've got a great coaching staff. It's a fun place to play football and go to school. Thanks so much, Coach. Congrats on the win. Thanks, Jen. Dave? 